Welcome back. So we have been looking at recurrence relations. So what so recurrence relation is a sequence of numbers where the initial set of numbers are given and the nth number or nth term in the sequence is given as a function of previous term. Now recurrence relations is extensively used for combinatorics, analysis of algorithms and various other topics. We have seen how recurrence relations can be used to model various counting problems and we have been looking at how to solve these recurrence relations. So some of the examples of recurrence relations that appear are something like t1 equals to 1 and tn equals to 2 plus tn minus 1 or t1 equals to 1, t2 equals to 3 and tn equals to tn minus 1 plus tn minus 2 or this one is what we get from the tower of Hanoi which is h1 equals to 1, h2 equals to 3 and hn equals to 2 times hn minus 1 plus 1. Then we have the Fibonacci sequence which is f1 equals to 1 f2 equals to 1 and fn equals to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. Then we have something like b1 equals to 1 and bn equals to bn over 2 plus 1. This is what we get from the binary search algorithm. And similarly we have this one that we get from the merge sort algorithm m1 equals to 1, mn equals to 2 times m n over 2 plus n and the one that we get what we call the Catalan number c1 equals to 1 and cn plus 1 equals to summation of i equals to 0 to n ci times tn minus i. Now the question that comes up is that how do we solve this recurrence relation? So we have seen it somehow. This technique that we have looked at is first of all guess the solution and prove using induction. So in other words, if you correctly guess the solution, then you can prove using induction that the guess is correct. The question is, how do we guess the solution? So in the last two videos, we saw one particular technique, namely, we unfold the definitions. And by unfolding the definitions, for example, we write t1 equals to 1 and tn equals to 2 plus tn minus 1. Then we write tn minus 1 as tn minus 2 plus 2 and so on. And after ith iteration, I get tn in terms of some expressions and tn minus i. And that helps us to kind of choose the right i for which we can get a full correct value of tn. And by doing so, we could guess that tn equals to 2n minus 1. In the next one, we could guess that it is equals to n into n plus 1 by 2. And in the tower of Hanoi, we could guess that hn equals to 2 power n minus 1. Now, in any of these cases, the idea is guess and then prove by induction. Now, problem is that many times guessing can become quite tricky. For example, if we have a Fibonacci expression like this, f1 equals to 1 and f2 equals to 1 and fn equals to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. Now the guessing the value of fn is quite complicated because the final value of fn, the actual value is something as complicated as this. 1 plus square root 5 by 2 whole power n minus 1 minus square root 5 by 2 whole power n whole divided by square root 5. You can clearly understand that guessing this value is not a easy job. Sometimes we have expressions like this b1 equals to 1 and bn equals to bn over 2 plus 1 but because of this ceiling here we can say that getting a simple clean expression for bn is not an easy job. In fact, there doesn't exist a neat guess, a nice guess that exists. So how do we 
go about solving them. Let's look at an example. So here is an example that occurs in the mod sort algorithm. M1 equals to 1 and Mn equals to Mn over 2 plus Mn over 2 plus N where the first one is a ceiling and the second one is a flow. And what does the ceiling mean? So if it is, this means that this is the smallest integer that is bigger than n over 2 and this one is the largest integer that is less than n over 2. So if n is even then both of these so n over 2 by 2 is equals to n over 2 which is equals to just this n over 2. But if n is odd, then n over 2, sorry, n over 2 is actually n plus 1 over 2 and n over 2 is n minus 1 over 2. And as you can see that n is equal to n over 2 plus n over 2. Now this is the definition of these two expressions of floor and ceiling. Now how do we, can we guess them? Can I guess anything? Of course one technique is to unfold it. Let's try to unfold it mn equals to m n over 2 plus m n over 2 plus n which is again I can write this one as n over 2 plus m floor of floor n over 2 by 2 plus m by 2 plus something something something. Already as you can see this expression is becoming very ugly. Not much that we can do about it. The reason is that we cannot simplify this. Even if n is even Okay, in that case, I don't have to write this one. I can, this is this plane n over 2. But then here, this will become n over 2 by 2, ceiling of that. And when is n over 2 by 2 ceiling? It is only when n over 2 is even. Or in other words, n is a multiple of 4. So in other words, the only way I can simplify this whole expression is when n is a power of 2. So if we can guess, I mean, question is that can we guess this number mn when n is of a particular type? And the idea is that what happens if n equals to 2 power k? So let's see what happens. If n equals to 2 power k, the good thing is that both of them is just n over 2, right? So I have mn equals to, so I get twice m n over 2 plus n, which is equals to 2 times m. Now n over 2 is also a power of 2, hence also a uh, even number and hence I can just again apply this one and I get n over 4 plus n over 2 right plus n which is 2 times m n over 4 plus 2 n. What is the next one? Next one is 2 times this. So again 2 times Sorry, I made a mistake here. This should be 2, so this should be 4. Right? So this should be 4. 
So what do I have again? Four times when I expand this m n over four, I get twice m n over eight plus n over 4 plus 2n which is now again as you can see here becomes 8m n over 8 plus 3 so in other words if I repeat it again and again and again after i step I will get 2 power i m m over 2 power i plus i times n is 3 is 2 power 3 and now the idea is that if I put i equals to log n so if i equals to k if i equals to k then I have n equals to 2 power k in that case if i equals to k what do I get I get this term to become 2 power k plus k times n right which is this is a this is k plus 1 times n so in other words we have been able to do it or guess it for a certain class of n which is namely for n equals to 2 power k, we could then guess it to be n to power k, which is n power k, so it should be plus 1 as we just now saw. n log n base 2 plus 1. Good. So at least for some class of n, we can guess it. Question that comes now is that can we say that this is the right expression for all n and the fact is that possibly not because for normal n there should be a floor and a ceiling which will just make this whole life more complicated at least ugly to do the calculation so instead we ask can we get an upper bound, say something like 2n log n? And I leave it to you to prove that, prove using induction that mn is indeed bigger than 2n log n for n bigger than 5. And so we can interpret that. But this is just an upper bound. Can we come up with a matching lower bound? And again, it so turns out that we can. We can prove that the lower bound is n over 2 log n. Again, this is I leave it to the next exercise. Prove using induction. m of n is bigger than n over 2 log 2 base n. So what do we have? So in fact, although we could not guess the actual value of m n, we first guessed m n for some class of n, namely powers of 2. And then we could say that, so in fact, this should be for all n greater than or equal to 5. Mn is lower bounded and upper bounded by two terms. It is upper bounded by 2 log n and lower bounded by 
n over 2 log n. So why we could not come up with the exact formula for mn, we could come up with the inequality, upper bound and lower bound, where the difference between them is not too much. The upper bound is just four times the lower bound. Now in many times, particularly for this example, so this is the number of steps required for made by a particular program namely the mod sort and when we are looking at the number of steps we are not worried about two things first of all what happens for small n so we are only worried about big n when the input size is big what happens so this is what is called as asymptotic so as n increases what happens for small n we don't care and second thing is that we really don't care whether the bounds are tight or not. In fact, as long as we understand that the value that we are looking for is within a constant fraction of something else, we are happy. So in other words, of course the question is that it's always good to come up with an exact answer, but if we cannot, we are usually happy if I get an answer which is a constant factor array. I will formalize all these things in the next class or next video when we will be looking at what we now call asymptotic notations. And using that, we will formalize when we say that this is a pretty good estimate. Thank you.